It's my triumphant return to Brimfield. And I just pulled into New England Motel Field and saw a site that's a little too familiar to me, which is my space is marked off with caution tape. John said it's because they just didn't want people driving around on it. But I told him, asked him to please make sure because I don't want to get stuck again like I did, you know, that other time, stuck in the mud. So I'm f waiting for a call back to let me know whether my space is a mud puddle or not. And if it is, they're going to move me. That's what they said. Good morning. They ended up moving me. I kind of insisted to the back fence, which I don't know if it's a good spot or not. But at this point, as long as I'm not going to get stuck in the mud, that is all I care about. Captain's over there under those blankets. He's still sleeping in. It's pouring. I knew it was going to pour today. It's been forecast that way. Uh, life was slightly less strenuous than usual because for the first time, I actually hired people to help me back. And that worked out pretty well. I had a guy come at nine o'clock in the morning. By like 11, we had pretty much put all the bins in the bus and most of the bins. And then we went over to storage and then I had somebody else meet us at 1230. So between the two of them, they got the furniture loaded up and I just supervised, which was, yes, yeah, I've never had that opportunity before. I mean, every time I've done this, and I've done this kind of thing many, many times, I've done it by myself and I'm usually the only person at any given show doing it by myself. You know, usually every booth has at least two people, sometimes more. So I thought, what the hell? Of course, I still turned the whole thing into a thrash by complicating some other things that I needed to do to get out of town. But I finally did get out of the house at about 3.45 yesterday. And uh, I had to go to Home Depot first because this is my first night sleeping on the bed I built and I wanted to try something different. So I had to go to Home Depot to get the lumber for that. And I managed to get in and out of there in half an hour, which is spectacular at Home Depot for me. And of course it hadn't rained all day, but then as soon as I got on the freeway, it started raining. And you know how Captain is with the windshield wipers. Maybe you don't know, but now you do because he goes nuts. <laughs> the rain just stopped as soon as I got here which was awesome and I was able to set up my tent and um, get some stuff into it I don't know how dry it is in there though because I forgot to zip the flap behind me when I closed it all up to come in for the night and I didn't yeah I didn't realize that till this morning so it all kind of depends what direction the raindrops are going and that's a little tough to tell so a lot of people came and set up yesterday and then went to their motel or hotel or whatever, wherever the hell they're going. I'm going right here. So, and Captain, uh, Captain is not particularly well behaved. He's uh, been barking at everybody. So I finally got him to calm down. He sat in the driver's seat while I got everything loaded into the tent. Yeah, then I set up my new bed that I built and we had a great night's sleep on it. It worked out fantastic. I'll show it to you guys one of these days. It's in the background, but you can't really see it, which is good because I want to do a little reveal on it. Um, but you probably figured out by now that I've kind of given up on like the big reveal. You know, I have, I get these ideas. I always want to do everything big, everything. I always have such great, um, ambitions for things, but like in this really, I mean, I think it's a positive trait. I don't think it's a negative, but the bottom line is simplicity is a lot simpler. I like to make a scene, I guess. I like to um, celebrate. I guess that's the word I would use. I like to celebrate. And sometimes celebrating works out great. Sometimes celebrating, not so much. Whenever I do a project video, I gain some people who find me through search, but I also lose some of my like people that I love because they don't they get bored with that stuff. They don't want me to do the things that other people do. But I think you've probably noticed by now, I don't do it the way other people do it. So look, here it is. Whatever's going on in my life, I'm gonna share it with you. And if that's working on the bus, I'm gonna share that with you. If that's sitting here staring out the window at rain at Brimfield, I'm gonna share that with you. This is what I'm doing. Believe me, I'd rather be doing something else besides looking out the window at raindrops right now myself. I could have had free help unpacking yesterday yeah but the guy who I paid to help me on Saturday kept saying to me oh if you're really nice to me well I didn't want to be that nice to him to be totally honest with you he kind of creeped me out um, yeah he 
Okay, the guy can't hear well, so he has to get close to here, but he kept using that as an excuse to put his hand on my waist, okay? Women, think about that. Who puts their hand on your waist that isn't like your husband or your boyfriend? You don't do that to somebody you don't know, especially someone who hired you. It's creepy. And I feel like when a guy does that, when they put their hand on your waist, I mean, if you're dancing, it's a different thing, right? But you're not dancing, we're just talking. We're trying to pack a truck that I hired him to pack. He's putting his hand on my waist. I feel like he's trying to test my boundaries. And I guess my boundaries are not that great because I didn't stop him, I let him do it. But I'll be damned if I'm gonna let him help me again, even for free, so yeah. Plus, I mean, on top of that too, I didn't really know exactly when I would be setting up because I didn't know what the weather's gonna be like. I didn't know when I was gonna actually leave the house. So it probably wouldn't have worked anyway definitely wouldn't have worked because of the creep factor. If you're watching this, sorry, but guys, you gotta know, if you are reaching over and putting your hand on a woman's waist while you're talking to her, and she's not your girlfriend, she's not your wife, you're creepy, okay? If you're wondering why she's not into you, that's why, because you're creepy. Don't do it. So this is me sabotaging myself again. I've spent the last two and a half hours untangling these rosary beads and yeah, it's um, okay. I might get like in my big clearance mode that I'm in, I might get 10 bucks for some of them, but mostly I'm probably going to get five bucks for each of these rosaries, but I cannot seem to leave it alone. You know, I keep saying, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I'm not almost done. I mean, I've done a bunch, but there's a lot still in this tangle. And it doesn't make any sense that I'm out here at 930 at night untangling these when I have so much else I have to do. I am trying to get this whole thing set up and organized tonight so that I can just put plastic tarps over it because it's going to rain at about 2 a.m. And then tomorrow have very little to do because it's all going to be organized already. That's the plan. But instead, I'm spending three hours untangling rosaries. Okay. Sometimes I wonder what, yeah. I'll make things a lot harder for myself than they need to be. Well, we opened mm, an hour ago, an hour and a half ago, and Project Empty Bus is going really well. I have only one piece of furniture left. I've got one of my three benches left. Everything else is sold. The bed sold. The table sold. The Asian settee sold. Everything sold. And then I had, I put together a box and said, name your price. And so far, every single person has paid me more than I would have charged if I had put it out for sale, so. I'm having a pretty good morning. So you buy fishing reels, I take it. I do. Yeah, I look nice. for uh, items that are 1950 and earlier. Uh-huh. Uh, American made, English made, a uh, couple, couple other Japanese firms, but not, cool. not too many others. Uh, quality stuff. Yeah. Uh, that's what I'm that's And what do I'm people stop you because of the sign and say, oh, okay, yeah. I got one for yeah. you? Yeah, conversation starters. And nice. I've had people track me down and actually run after me with guy? a reel in the hand yeah. to say, I've got something for, for you. Well, that's me. I'm going to put it right there. There he is. He buys old fishing tackle, reels, rods, and lures. So, earlier I was complaining about how on flea market flip, people always like really undersell. Like they take the craziest offers and they make the craziest offers. And I was complaining about that. And so just now, I just sold bar glasses to Lara Spencer, who's the host of Flea Market Flip. And I sold her three bar glasses for two dollars I don't know why I'm sure she would have paid five two dollars is what came out of my mouth and I kind of meant two dollars a piece but then I was having a hard time calculating the change because I was nervous because of the camera which you'd think I wouldn't be considering that I'm talking on the camera all the time but it's different when I'm not in control of it you know so I was having a hard time figuring out the money she said oh you owe me eighteen dollars out of twenty so I thought oh she thinks I mean two dollars total and I couldn't very well you know embarrass her on her camera of her own show so I said here's your eighteen dollars and sold her three bar glasses for two dollars it wasn't for flea market flip it was for good morning America so who knows I might be on I guess we'll find out 
I'm acting casual, but I am actually trying to get a shot of Lara Spencer from Flea Market Flip and Good Morning America as she leaves. Oh, there she is. She's going to the trash to throw away her cup. Look at that. Lara Spencer, ladies and gentlemen, throwing away a cup. Oh, and there's somebody else from her crew. They're throwing away their cup, too. And then some other random people will come by and throw away their cups. It's Friday, and uh, there are already people out there, and I haven't even opened the door of the bus. I haven't even put away the bed yet. Captain's still in the bed, so it's going to take a few minutes. Anyway, um, I didn't shoot anything yesterday, uh, Thursday. It was extremely hot, but people still came. People were excited to be here because it's been like 22 months since they held this thing. So... That was cool. Um, I didn't do anything close to the same business I did on day one, but I had a good time. That's what I'm here for. Anyway, um, I told you I'd do a live stream, and I, I will do a live stream tomorrow night, Saturday night, at 9 p.m. Eastern time. And I'm sorry to give you so little time to prepare for it, although, really, it's me that has to prepare for it. But, no, actually, I want you to prepare for it, too, because I want you to submit, if you can, please please questions you can submit them i'm going to put a um, comment on the community tab that allows you to submit them there you can put them in the comments on the video you can send them on the facebook group and i'm going to try to pull all the questions from wherever i find them so that i can answer them so if you have any questions about max about captain about brimfield you can ask questions about me but i feel like maybe you know a little too much about me already anyway um yeah, we're going to start our day here and get rolling, and we will see you tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Uh, today is supposed to be hotter than yesterday, and it's supposed to rain. So, yeah, we're going to get all the, all the wonder of a humid New England summer with blazing sun and rain all in one day. I got a lot to look forward to. I'm actually really looking forward to tomorrow when I will see you guys right back here.